Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. It's been a while since we've been to Canis, and I thought I'd cast a 5 versus 5 game. Apparently this is supposed to be a facepalm. Whoever sent it to me said that it had a ton of fails in it, so hopefully we'll get a good laugh. Uh, real quick, before we start, a little bit of a reminder. Uh, if you are a Patreon backer and you sent me a replay for the tutorial series please 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 resend that to me use the Facebook or email links in the description so that I have a permanent record of that message because when I was rebuilding my computer I apparently failed to transfer the file that had all of those messages saved in it when I get messages on um, FAF the IRC account does not permanently save messages, so I copy paste those to notepad and I don't have it anymore. So please resend those to me. Without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce the players and we will get started. On the north side, we have Magan taking Seraphim, Probot as Aeon Zaph01 as Seraphim, another Seraphim for God Inal, and Superdog taking UEF. So that's triple Seraphim, no Cybern. Again, this is the five versus five. On the southern side, no Cybern again. Goodness gracious alive, there is no love for Cybern today. What does the world come to? We've got two Seraphim. That is going to be Sky Outs and Ninray, otherwise known as Blackster. Then we've got WEF for Shai Halud and Mech Machine. And then finally, Aeon for Sodi Sodi Sodi. Mm, I'm not even gonna guess. Okay, all right, everybody knows how uh, Canis normally goes. You've got a bit of rocks on the outside edges of the bases. You can get some handy dandy reclaim to boost your early build. Uh, typically the center player here snags uh, possibly that mass extractor, maybe one of these back ones, basically whatever the four outside ring players will let him scavenge. And he does the best he can to get air online as quickly as he can. Sometimes it's a little too much to ask. Sometimes you'll get stuck with four mass extractors, but whatever. You do the best that you can. Everybody else fans out, takes a position, and tries not to die. It's basically the goal of every game. Don't die, kill everyone else. That's what I always say. If anybody asks me for a plan, that is it. All right, while we're waiting for everything to spread out and the game to actually get kick-started, I am... Greatly pleased with how my new PC build turned out. A lot of you already know I picked up a 4790K for the sake of running the simulation smoother while I'm running two uh, screen capture programs because of the retarded way that Forged Alliance handles dual screens. I can't actually cap both screens at the same time with the same program. And there's a whole lot of strange details that go into that, but just take my word for it, it's impossible. Um, and then, uh, so that is a huge help, and I actually got it in the last two days overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz, and it is 100% stable, and I'm loving it. I just buzzed through a replay a few minutes ago at, like, plus six for the whole replay, and it was awesome. So, enough babbling on about that. Let's see what's happening. We've got land scouts moving out from the northern team. Not a whole lot to do with air. There is an air scout, but it's very, very late, almost to the three-minute mark. So there's no early airplay to be seen. But we do have pairs of scouts headed out over here. We've got scouts on the right-hand side as well, even out to the very, very edges of the map. And, you know, it doesn't matter how you get that intel. You just need the intel as long as you know if there's units heading your way. Once you get a little bit used to how the game is running, you can actually look at the blips and tell exactly what kind of unit it is. You look at your mirror you see what faction he is and then you see how fast the units moving you can say oh that's a scout or an engineer or the ACU whatever it may be um, in the T1 phase the ACU has the slowest walking speed so on that T1 mobile radar otherwise known as the land scout you can pretty easily pick up on what exactly is going on without actually laying eyes on it Magan spent a lot of time building in the base but he is now going to head out across to the left side landmass. Zaf has beaten him there. And it looks like in the early run of the game, we have a tie for tops on Ninre and Zaf. Ironically, the two mirrored positions. They are holding down the fort at the top of the eco pile. Selen's coming down here for the engineer. This is the combo lab and oh beautiful double reclaim there with that engineer that was awesome little slow on the pickup for Magan. the selen is right dead in between the cost of a land scout and a mech marine and it has pretty much all of the 
strengths of both and the weaknesses of both. It can't quite compete with labs, but, you know, what are you going to do? You don't have a lab, so you got to build them. They did manage to kill one engineer off, though, so it is not a total loss. Basically, the biggest disadvantage to Selens is that you don't have a ghetto gunship, and everyone loves ghetto gunships, so that's a serious loss for your faction choice. So we've got a gun upgrade going down for Sodi Sodi Sodi. I don't know which one it is. I believe it is the speed, maybe? I can never remember which one is right and which one is left. We'll check in with him in just a moment and see which one it actually was. Let's take a look over here at the right. Looks like we got land factories going down, no upgrades. We've got a T2 upgrade going down for Superdog and a T2 for Zaf. Magan is still on his unupgraded commander. Let's take a look at Sodi. That is going to be the range upgrade. I was incorrect. Let's see. Yes. All right. So that is quantum disruptor. Apparently, the right and left arms are looking at the front of the ACU, which is kind of a weird way to do it. But I suppose it does kind of sort of make sense. There was an attempted incursion over here. No loss of mechs, only one engineer down, and those two strikers are going to be able to clean up those thams, no problemo. Attempted mechs build here, but uh, yeah, his teammate beat him to it, so there's nothing to be done. And at the moment, it looks like mostly T1 spam. I don't see any T2 as of yet. It should be coming out fairly soon, though. We are at the six-minute mark, and to not have T2 at this point is honestly kind of weird. I love the double adjacency on Canis. You can drop two T2 mexes and build extremely low cost units out of this factory if you so desire. Let's see what we got around the rest here. T2 ACU for mech machine. He's going to throw down a TMD again. I know I've said it before. I've said it on a lot of set uh, Canis cast, sentence cast. This is not sentence. It is the middle of the freaking desert with a small river flowing down the middle. Um, there is always a TML comp. I don't think I have ever seen a game that did not have a TAC comp in it. That's going to be a T2 upgrade. Got an L, and I bet you he is going to be the one that grabs that TAC comp. Magan throwing down a T1 point defense. I'm going to try to hold this position off in the face of all of these Auroras. Unfortunately, with the amount of T1... T1 mobile artillery, I don't think that T1 point defense is going to do any good at all, but the fact that it is there appears to have scared away the bugs for now, so he's going to retreat a little bit and kind of sit and see what's happening. Getting his other gun upgrades. That's going to be a brutal, aggressive ASCU, and what do we have here? The back door was left wide open. There was not a single unit to be found in between these tanks <laughs> and the base. That is so beautiful. Wiping out two mass extractors. Going to get all the way around into the outside edge and firing range of these T2 engineers. They can kill both of them fast enough. There's no point defense. Kill a kill. And there we go. It's in the green, but it is safe. He now needs to get back in the build power as quick as he can to do as much damage as he can. Magan is under fire from Sodi. Now this is, well, actually I'm not going to say that. I was about to say you don't want to target the other ACU with your gun. But when you have this many T1 units, it doesn't really matter because you're going to obliterate his face anyway. And I sense a death incoming. Auroras are swarming over that position. The 200 DPS of that ACU is shredding Magan's health. Add a couple overcharges in here and there, and you have got a recipe for disaster. Megan is dropping rapidly under 3,500 health. 24. Actually, let me put my cursor on him. There we go. 16. 13. The Aurora's are kind of getting a little distracted, and they're now hitting that T1 point defense. He may actually... Nope, there's the overcharge, and boom! The T1 point defense is brutal versus Aurora's. I mean, it can kill so many of them so fast because of its low HP. The Aurora's low HP, but it just was not quite enough. That extra reach from 
the orange ACU was able to reach past that point defense, kill that ACU, and now the left-hand side has utterly disintegrated. Now, if I were Sodi, I would actually be pushing as hard as I could up this side because floaty tanks. You don't have to worry about these bodies of water. They are nothing in the face of your progression. You can just cruise right across over there into the base and prevent that expansion. It's definitely the best way to go in this situation. Let's take a look here. We've got... Enel is on T2 and gun, I think. Yes, he is. Not quite to the tack launcher upgrade. Kamikaze Bomber. I approve. Let's see, Superdog is on T2 without the gun upgrade, so that's his only one. We do have some movement towards the back here. ACU is going to intercept. Basically, Sodi hesitated. I hate to say it, if he would have kept progressing instead of pulling back, he probably could have gotten these Auroras around the outside edge and actually done a little bit of damage at least. But Zaf is going to place himself firmly in the path of these Auroras and with that gun upgrade he's got on his ACU, there's really nothing to be done. He can reach out and touch those things without being in much danger himself. As long as he doesn't get swarmed, Sodi is going to pull all of his units back and that is the end of that push. I do like this T2 point defense here, it covers the bridge quite nicely. One or two more would not be a bad idea, though, considering the amount of T1 spam coming from this side. Complemented by the tanks, though, I don't think there will be too much of a problem. And there is an ACU tack. Superdog saw it coming, though, and he is going to get the hell out of Dodge while he can. Nenray is going to keep pumping out those tacks, though, heading up north towards the mass extractors. There are no TMD in place. There's one building, but we've already got three in the air, and I think all three are going to connect before that TAC, long, TAC defense builds. Here comes T1 bombers, hopefully aimed exactly for that. Point defense going down on the left-hand side. We all know there's going to be a small amount of turtle on Canis, and it has attempted to set in, so he's going to have to pull back a little bit. He's got plenty of units to back him up. I don't think he's in any danger but he is going to have to, well, no. Holy crap, that T2 point defense. No, the overcharge killed it. Back up, back up. No, he could have gotten away, I think. Maybe that was a well-targeted T2 point defense. The Seraphim T2 point defense, if I am not totally mistaken, has the highest DPS. It may be Aeon, uh, not sure. I, I want to say it's Seraphim. Even if it's not the highest, the Seraphim PD just has so much damage. There's Ninray taking a bit of fire from this T1 group pushing in. He is trying to charge up that tank launcher. Build that missile in the chamber, and it looks like he is going to finish it off. I was about to say, well, maybe he stalled, but he apparently is managing his eco quite handily. There's the close range shot. Not quite. Got an L closing distance with that comp not going to get blasted with that. The tack is already rebuilt though. He's got to back up and try to fire point blank. Why is he not firing? Should have toasted that guy already. I don't think this is the balance patch. So he should still have the close range tack ability and the large AOE. No, he is launching northward. Where is that headed? Out into the middle of freaking nowhere. No idea what's going on. Headed for that? Why is he shooting a T1 mass extractor? Oh well. That is his own choice. He does have a reasonably good amount of health still, and he is charging that tack pack up with all the speed he can muster. He has eliminated a couple of mass extractors out that way. If I were him, I would be pounding away on the head of God and all. And it looks like God has the tack launcher as well. Nice! We got a tack pack war. Another unsuccessful fire. Shai Halud is getting out of the way for that one. My goodness, don't stop moving. Do not stop. Don't blink or you're dead. And now we wait for the loading cycle to continue. It looks like he did actually take attack. 
Either that or some sustained damage because... Oh, don't stand still! No! Ninray taking <laughs> a close range shot. This must be the beta patch because it's forcing the tax way out far. Um, and he has the tack pack as well. Good lord, there's so many tack missiles. What's a guy supposed to do? See, this is exactly what I love about the balance patch. Right there. You can no longer point blank fire those mi- Well, yeah, they curve out quite a bit. Can't fire them literally at your feet anymore. Hug me! Hug me close, otherwise I'm dead! <laughs> oh my word. Gives the dance of death a whole new meaning there. Oh, there's the misstep. Not fast enough, Ninray. Sorry, but you get the boot. We've still got two TACCOMs in the water, though, so these guys can continue the... Oh, man. All right, he's going to finish off that Torp Launcher, which is immediately going to die because Blackster died. Ninray. He's got to start up his own... There's the tack launch. Move quickly. <laughs> this is great. This is absolutely great. I can't go to anywhere else, though. That's the problem. Because at any moment, one of these guys is going to die. And I'm going to miss it. I just know that I'm going to miss it. Trying to watch the little yellow dots. They're both below 6,000 health. So basically, whichever one lands a shot first wins. Is that? Nope. Goodness gracious alive. A nice little group of T2 units over here in the left-hand corner. This is trying to force into the left side, which is the weaker side for both teams, actually. They both lost players over here. It's a little bit of sparring going on on that side, and Shai Halud is actually doing very well for himself. He has the second highest eco, pulling in 70. Oh, T1 Artillery on the shore, picking up that torpedo launcher. Don't want to stand next to it, because that actually will damage you under the water as well. Mech is building a torp launcher. Oh, no, tactical missile defense. That is brilliant right there. That's going to eliminate his teammate's problems with that tack pack, because those tack packs are immediately going to get shot out of the air as soon as they leave the water, thanks to that. So now it will only be Enel that is quick stepping torp bombers are on the case too stumbling over my own tongue sky outs pushing those out nice little helpful teammate there looks like the tack launchers are going to start shooting out towards other things possibly more valuable targets than continuing to waste eco trying to nail one of these guys there's the buzz kill not enough he needs to be either closer to the TMD. The curve is just so aggressive on that missile. You can see how tight that loop is. And there's the ACU blast right when I zoom in. <laughs> well done. Got an L. The, ace, the loop on that TAC missile is so tight that the TMD is actually misfiring trying to hit it. So there he goes on the retreat. Yet another player has fallen on the south side. That means it is two versus four it does not look good for the south team we got 138 mass per tick that was re reclaimed 100 mass per tick for sky out and then 137 for mech machine now that is a solid number 138 and he has actually been overflowing a little bit of mass now he's okay sky out was surviving on reclaim which means that he should be able to boost his eco quite substantially he's got a t3p gen down he's got a t3 mass extractor but he needs to be claiming these bases he's got two engineers on expansion if i were him i'd have about 20 and be hardcore upgrading a T3 mech. So at the moment, he just does not have enough build power. He's upgrading a T2 land factory. He needs to have several. Oh, well, would you look at that? Percival's nailing that ACU in the face because it was dumb enough to stick its head out of the water. 
That is fantastic. Great job, Mech Machine. Talk about unlucky. Holy cow. You dance with another ACU with two TACCOMs and live, killing both ACUs. And then all you do is stick your miserable head over the waterline and get blasted to Kingdom Come by a Percival. Isn't that the story of Subcom? It's basically it right there. So the odds just got a little bit better. We've got three versus two, and the two have a substantial established eco. And Mech Machine is pulling T3 UEF units, which is going to give him a severe upper hand, an extremely good upper hand on anybody else in the field at this time. We've only got T2 units, handful. And by handful, I mean three. Four Ilshivas. So the Percivals should own. Man, that was a flippy floppy. Sky out. If I were Sky out at this moment, I would actually be throwing down about four more T1 factories just to build T1 engineers. Because especially once he starts T3 air production, he needs a lot of engineers to push that. Probably needs to drop the resource allocation upgrade as well. He's got the T3, um, the T3 power generator, which is going to put him in a good place. 3.8k power income, and he is mass stalled. I would be using, I think, the most efficient use of this reclaim would be to snag another T3 mass extractor, and then once that was done, there's one right there. He needs to be assisting that and reclaiming like a boss. And then drop that resource allocation. You can see even with the T3 power generator, he's only 289 plus building T3 air. T3 air just takes so much power to build. It is really kind of ridiculous. It is a good limiting factor because T3 air is super duper strong. You got to get that resource allocation online on a map like this. He's going to go for a second T3 power generator though. Think about RAS, for slightly more cost than building a T3 power generator, you get a little bit more power and you get mass too. And it's attached to your ACU, so it can't be sniped without you losing the game. It's just awesome, pretty much all the way around. Always get RAS in a team game, always. Unless you're like way out on the front line doing uber aggressive Rambo comp. You can pretty much just, if you're chilling at the base, you should have resource allocation. That is my personal opinion. Maybe not as Cybern, because then you would not be able to get the glorious Telemazer as easily. There's a Percival falling to pillars. There are so many pillars all up in his face that he's not going to be able to take them all out. And then actually, that's kind of ridiculous. The 1500 health... Oh, that was a vetted one. I was about to say, 1650, it survives a shot by 50 HP. That veterancy pushes it out of the reach of a single shot by a Percival which is actually kind of cool. Percival's rolling down from the front now. Superdog has T3, and he's building T2 gunships. He's going to get out and harass these Percivals to death unless Amer comes along and helps. One down, another to go. Looks like Superdog has done a pretty good job of expanding out into these positions. He's the northern team has just about all of the mass extractors locked down on their side of the map. There's a couple here closer to the front line that are not. But I mean, if you draw a line right here across the map, they're all claimed. And if you draw a line right here across the map, we've got several of them empty. Now, granted, these guys are working on filling them in, but they're being a bit slower about it. So these guys are going to get their ecos back online quicker. At the moment, we have 158, 102, and 93 mass per tick on the north side, and 69 and 200 on the south side. So the total eco of the north side still outstrips the south. Percival's moving up through the left expansion now. There is an ACU there and a lot of point defense. So these Percivals are not going to be able to get anywhere by going here. They may, however, be able to do something useful on the north side, and that was that was awful. <laughs> the shield went over the T2 point defense and immediately died. And then we have a single shot 
from a well-placed Sam taking out that Percival in the transport. So not a whole lot going to go down on the left side. Enough T3 tanks are online to be able to kill off that Percival pretty dang easily. Really not even taking any substantial damage. Three versus one. What do you expect? Let's see here. Nothing especially nasty in the works up here. We have a Galactic Colossus, but at this point, 22 minutes into the game, if we didn't have a T4, I would be worried. Here we have a useless strategic defense. I think it's useless. Yes, it is useless because there is no nuke. So if you're scouting regularly and you do not see a nuke, then this right here, my friends, is a waste of approximately... Oh, wait a minute. Where is his T3? I think Sky out has the ACU. There it is. That is a waste of 7,500 mass, which is roughly a third the cost of a chicken. So you could have a T4 online much, much, much quicker if you didn't build that nuke defense. Now, having said that, in a team game, sometimes it is worth it, because if you forget to build it, or you're not scouting consistently, then you can get dead from that. But if you're scouting like you should be, then you shouldn't have to build nuke defense. Percival's moving up the right-hand side. Thankfully, there are enough online from the north that I don't think that is going to be super threatening. Hopefully, well, there's Commander... Sh oh, that's a Rambo comp. Goody, goody, goody. I thought it was an ACU. I was about to say, I really, really hope that Mech Machine does not make the same mistake. <laughs> that Anel did because that would be highly embarrassing to have happen twice in the same game no matter who the players were or what team they were on two tanks versus three tanks I think we can safely determine who the winner of that is going to be and then over here we have three Percivals versus three and a gunship and now two and two gunships it is incredible how quickly damage stacks up if you have a 3 to 2 advantage because of the damage reduction of killing the first unit, you may actually have uh, 3 live versus 2, depending on if you can micro around one of the shots or not. Percival's laying into this T3 support factory over here. It's going to take the build power offline that's in this expansion. And once they wipe that out, there will be no rebuilding until an engineer can travel from all the way over here. That's basically what you want to be doing. You want to restrict and hinder your opponent as much as you possibly can if you can't actually kill them. So doing stuff like this, basically being a thorn in the side of anyone on the other team, is pretty much the best you can hope for. We do have some Sams up on the front. That is going to give some good area denial for these ASF. White is building some ASF. Sky Out has a handful of T3 air, but it is nothing compared to Probot, who is actually living up to his name compared to the other team, if his ASF production is anything to determine that by. Mech Machine pulling in a whopping 315 mass per tick as opposed to 217 from po Probot, the second highest. So that is a 100 mass advantage. It is so sad that these guys did not send mobile flak with these Percivals. Just a couple of mobile flak, two and one shield, would have been able to protect all of these Percivals thanks to the tanky HP. They will probably make it all the way up in here, kill this mechs and progress a little bit, but they could have gone so much farther for just the little tiny mass cost of those two flak units and that shield. It's honestly kind of depressing to watch. On the left hand side though, we have three Percivals taking up a doomed assault upon this base. And I really don't see how they're going to do anything useful against that. There are so many T2 point defense. Ah, the graceful galactic colossus strolling across the backdrop of our shot. That means we do have a T4 online. If there are enough Percivals and Rambo comms, there should not be any issue dealing with that, I don't think. Got plenty of... Plenty of Othams, a couple of Percivals, and a Rambo comm way over here. If they can get their game together, then they're good. Here come the Strap Bombers and the Gunships, so I don't think the game is together. 
My word. What is Green doing? Mobile Flack and a Fat Boy. Anything at this point. He's got two Quantum Gateways up, one of which is not even producing, and he's building a third. Is he drunk? That is my question. A 1500 rank. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. We'll just have to see what the outcome is. Okay. So Zaf is now in ownership of the GC. Pretty much turtling away. Not doing a terrible lot in this game. And then on the right, we do have a Quantum Gateway up for Superdog. He's also going to be pushing some Rambo comms. And a second Galactic Colossus coming from Probot. Hopefully this Galactic Colossus can be put to some good use. That would be the best that we can hope for at this point. All right. Hilarity happening at the beginning. But this game has slowed down quite a lot. Trying to stick with it here. Hopefully there will be something towards the end. It may actually be my frame of mind. Othams taking up the assault on this GC. Unfortunately, there is nowhere near a mass equivalent force. So the GC is going to handily demolish that group. Um, I actually work an extremely long shift today. And my mind is kind of shot. So basically, I'm trying to maintain my speech while observing what I can about the game. And hopefully, I'm not missing too much. Um, I need a fry meme. Not sure if tired or boring game. <laughs> uh, might have to actually put that in the cast in the post-production. Um, second GC is online and towards the front. We do have a Rambo Com out here, which is terribly exposed. Again, all you need is a couple mobile flak. That's all you could ask for in this world, and it would do glorious things for your game. There's a Rambo Com moving up on the north side. Some Sams for area denial over on the right. Here come the strats. And the shield is so very strong with this one. Unfortunately, the power stall is kind of dampening the effect. Rambo Com and Percival's blocking the pass for this Galactic Colossus. You shall not pass. And I don't think he will, because that... Well, nope, there's the veteran C. And he will. Well done. The Othams plus the GC did it. I saw the health dipping. I was really, really hoping that it would not end that way. But now the left side is pretty much toasty fried. There is a chicken headed in, but versus a vetted GC, I don't think the chicken stands a chance. That's completely disregarding the Othams that are also there. GC moving in on the right as well. I think we'll finally see the fold. Strat Bomber's taking out that Rambo Com on the north side. He's trying to build a couple of Sams, but unfortunately just not able to get enough stuff online to prevent his own death. Terribly helpless feeling. Two Rambo Coms coming in to assist that chicken. If he could just stop his power stall, he would actually be doing pretty well, but when you're 2400 in the hole and trying to build a fat boy, well, I can see why he's stalling, because he's trying to burn off all of his mass in that fat boy. But, uh, yeah, four Rambo comms now. This is start, this is going to start, uh, making headway, because four Rambo comms deals out a ton of DPS. I'm not actually sure right off the top of my head what it is, because if this is the balance patch, then it will be a different number than what I would think it was. So I'm not going to venture a guess. You thought the surviving Yathoda chicken, whatever it is, surviving with about half health, all four Rambo comms surviving. I'm going to move back up towards the north and deal with this T3 force. On the right hand side, there is a little bit of aggression being shown by a single lonely Rambo com, which if you were to hop across the water, could actually do a serious amount of damage over here before he was stopped. Because there's not a whole lot of combat units over here. Just a couple of point defense. Chicken and Rambo comms are going to make very quick work of this T3 force. Minimal damage. 
to the infrastructure and he will be getting a fat boy online momentarily just flipped over 75 percent on that build and what have we here but a donut that's gonna be fun so i've always been curious is the head on the galactic colossus the donut hole I think this is the real question that we should be asking ourselves. I thought there was a Galactic Colossus on the right side. Am I missing something? There it is. What are you doing up there? You are vetted. Why are you not down here? Wreaking havoc, as is your nature. You're kind of being useless and not fulfilling your life's goal by staying there. There you go. Slowly but surely headed towards the south plotting his way towards the degree that he should have so he can start his career in demolition. Let's see. I don't know why these tiny groups of Percivals keep trying to get around the left side because there are so many point defense and now strap bombers and chickens and whatnot that there's really no hope of these guys ever making any headway. Basically just tossing mass at this point. Also, if they had been paired with this chicken, that might have been able to do something. Maybe. I doubt it. Still too many T2 point defense and shielding. Maybe, just maybe, we're finally going to see the end of this mess. The Tsar is online. And it is about to head south. I think that's too small to be a donut hole. Teddy Bear's head is just not big enough. Alright, you have a donut. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to eat it? Are you going to store it in a cabinet? Keep it till it gets moldy? Think, oh my goodness, I would enjoy a donut right now. But you know, I've already been bad today. I'm on my diet. I should just leave it in the cabinet. Oh, there it is. It's headed southward. War of the Rambo comms. I was about to say that the numbers will win it. But when you have a galactic colossus face blasting you into oblivion, then you know you might be having a bad time. They still did pretty dang well for themselves, but they're down to five in number. I think that was two that just died. And by the way, the Rambo comms do actually leave Rex now. That is what those are. Unusual looking Rex. So yeah, bear that in mind. When Rambo comms go nuclear you now have a wreck that you can reclaim and that also means that you can't stick rambo comms into the other guy's base for free you will actually be dumping that mass on their doorstep just as if you sent them a t4 so always keep that in your mind the donut is going to <laughs> drape itself around the neck of the chicken we should be taking uh, baking ideas from this game Nice and toasty fried golden baked chicken. And then that donut pretty much has free reign of the south side. There are no more ASF. There's a handful, a teensy tiny little handful, but blue is pretty much dominating the air. There's a handful of Sam's, but not too terribly much. And there's a whole lot of veterancy to be had right here in the form of these engineers. All you got to do is hover your donut around on top of it. And it is all yours for the taking. That GC is marching forward steadily. Hopefully the donut can knock out that fat boy. Or maybe not. Maybe he's just going to leave it. Yep, break up that veterancy. And here comes the HP pop. There it goes. Nope. There it is. 69,000. Green trying to knock it out of the sky. But there is just not enough DPS around to actually force that donut to its knees or rather the ground build power build power going down everywhere galactic colossus is going to make it in range of that fat boy and ko it p gen's going down now yeah i think this game is over the donut has done in another person mech machine is going to succumb to the diabetes and so will everyone else. <laughs> oh, that's great. So many Rambo comms. Like, okay, here's the thing. 
There are four quantum gateways, which I can understand building four factories. Or I can understand building four quantum gateways if you're going to ring them with mass fabricators for the adjacency bonus. However, building four individual, unassisted, un... well, non-adjacency quantum gateways is such a tremendous waste of mass that I'm not sure what to think about that. Because of the cost of each one of these gateways, you just about could have built a Rambo comp. So... yeah might want to think about that prioritization a little bit better next time so the quantum gateway costs 3,000 mass okay not quite as much as a rambo comp but uh yeah let me see what one costs to build just for curiosity's sake as going to be the combatants there we go rambo preset 5,900 mass okay so for two extra quantum gateways you could have built a rambo comp not quite as bad as what I thought, but still wasted mass is wasted mass. Better to throw some build power on one of those quantum gateways. Chicken, fat boy, and the donut. This this is seriously sounding like a cooking show. It really is. The further I get into this, the hungrier I am getting. Because all of this is named foods and fat people. <laughs> Just like diabetes slowly creeps over your body, chopping off your limbs and assimilating you to your very core, so the meals <laughs> are taking over the map and demolishing it. <laughs> the northern team is doing to this game what Kentucky Fried Chicken does to your cholesterol. <laughs> Let's just run with this. I am I am so looking forward to reading the comments section on this video. That's going to be great. Because there are a lot more clever people than I am that watch these casts. Okay. SACU's rolling in. The donut is finally going to get knocked out of the sky. And fall where it really didn't do a whole lot of damage. Would have been just a little bit further this way. Could have knocked out a lot of build power when it was going, but as it is, the damage is done. There's really not a whole lot else online. Here comes a chicken, but we're about to see some massive fast veterancy for this Yathotha. With the fat boy to back it up, I don't think this chicken will win. We got Rambo comms coming in, dealing a lot of damage to this base. Terrifying explosions left, right, and center getting hammered from both sides at the same time. I see you, fat boy. You're peeking out into the open. There you go. Don't be shy. Come in and take part in the party. You can bombard anything you can set eyes on. You can see what the veterans he did for this chicken. 92 kills on that son of a gun, and he gained 10,000 HP while taking damage. But I think that is going to be over. He's going to direct fire focus fire rather this Yathotha good choice walking in while he still has the ability to walk to dump that lightning storm as close to the base as he can for maximum damage potential chicken walking over and not dealing the critical blow and he's gonna take both the death damage and the lightning storm oh with the fat boy that far back there's no hope of killing that fat boy before the chicken goes up in flames that fat boy is just going to casually kill that base. Nothing else to be done at it. Done about it. All right, Rambo comms from the right. Basically, we're just waiting for everyone to die. Zaf coming in on the left, packing in more units where these don't even really fit to begin with. Let us all watch the doom of the southern team. Doom! And voice cracks, just for good measure. Fat boy is gonna lay into that chicken, as fat men are wont to do. Okay, I don't know how. I have literally been casting for a year, and it never dawned on me that you can basically describe food groups with the nicknames for subcom units. <laughs> Building a heart. Love me please. I don't want to die. P 
peace and love. Is that not what the world is about? Trying to build some T2 shields and keep them online, but uh, not having a very good time of it with the fat boy pounding away at him. As low as his health is when that chicken goes up, Zap is going to be the end of him. There he is. Nuclear fire shining up as a beacon from that ACU going nuclear. I think that was slightly repetitively redundant, but whatever. You get my drift. Hero T2 gunship just too late to the party. And that, my friends, is game. I don't think I really have any post-game comments on that. Game pretty much speaks for itself. Lots of fails, lots of hilarity all around the outside edges. Well done to the peeps playing it. If nothing else, you were very entertaining. And that is going to wrap it up for this game. Alrighty, folks. Again, if you have replays, please send them to me using the Facebook link or the email link in the description of this video. I will take replays also on YouTube in the private messages or in the comments. I'm going to try to get away from taking them on the FAF client because I lost a lot of them when I copied over my drives and that was very shameful of me to do. So, especially if you have a Patreon cast, please get me a replay number so that I can get those out as quickly as I can. I got three of them and I feel absolutely terrible for not getting them recorded. So just send them over and I'll get those out as quick as I possibly can. Do not forget, Saturday, there's a live cast. Tune in for that. And until then, I will see you guys later. As always, thank you so much for watching.